and the U.S. House of Representatives is cutting its August recess short to address funding for the Postal Service. A bill is in the works to give $25 million to the agency despite objections from the White House. The new Postmaster General, a major donor to President Donald Trump's campaign, has already put cost-cutting measures in place that have reportedly slowed mail delivery. Democrats say the cuts would make it more difficult to expand and carry out mail-in voting. Now, Democratic U.S. Representative Lloyd Doggett is joining us this midday to talk a little bit more about this from his perspective. Good morning to you, Representative Doggett. Good morning, Ashley. Great to join you. Yeah, you know, for weeks now, we've seen these claims from the president on Twitter. He's been making comments against mail-in voting, claiming that it will lead to voter fraud. We ourselves have done a lot of stories, uh, you know, verifying those claims. So when this action was taken at the post office, did this come as a surprise to you at all? Well, it came as a great disappointment. Uh, and uh, there's no doubt that there's been politically motivated slowdown of our mail wholly apart from vote by mail, which is so important. Uh, there are many people in our community that are counting on the mail for so much, a lifeline for their medicine. I've been hearing from them, veterans. Uh, I've been hearing from a small business person who told me that uh, his packages seem to be treated like ping pong around the country. The evidence is clear that there has been a deliberate slowdown. I have the memo that went out July the 10th that tells postal employees, essentially, don't worry if mail is left behind on the floor or on the dock. And that's why we're seeing this slowdown. Uh, I think we know why the president wants to do it. I want to get it stopped, and that's why I'm supporting and authoring uh, this uh, Delivery for America Act that I hope we pass on Saturday. We're trying to do it in the least partisan way possible. We do have one Republican co-sponsor. Uh, the White House has said they would sign a bill that dealt only with the post office. If they don't want to give the 25 billion that I think is necessary, then let's agree on a figure and try to assure that people get their medicine and their other vital services from the post office and keep the politics out of it. So let's talk about this for people who don't understand what even led to this happening. How did this all even start? Well, I think it all started because the president appointed uh, one of his big campaign contributors who didn't have any experience in the post office to get over there and manipulate things. And the president has now made very clear often, you know, uh, he can't pass your verified test, which is so important. Uh, but I think he was straightforward in saying he was doing this because he wants to limit vote by mail. To keep in mind that vote by mail is what our military relies on from all over the world. Uh, it's what many people, including myself, have relied on when I've been away in Washington at the time of a local election. Uh, I believe that every uh, Texan ought to be using vote by mail if they're qualified to do it. That's all over 65, and it's many under 65 who may not consider themselves disabled, but they qualify under the statute as uh, having an impairment that would affect them at the polling place. If you have any questions about that, I hope people will contact our office because we have more information. Uh, and it's really important that people not have to choose between their health and the health of our democracy and their right to participate. You know, the president tweeted out, save our postal service. He has indicated that he is willing to sign, a, you know, a bill related to more funding for the postal service. So is there something to be said about the efforts that he is trying to make? Well, we're going to give him that opportunity. And that's why I say we have tried to craft. This is a simple three page bill that we will approve on Saturday combined with $25 billion that the Postal Service has said it needs to keep doing its job. Uh, let's agree on that amount or another and give him a bill that he can sign and live up to his latest tweet. Uh, you never know because he, he is so erratic in the way he handles these matters. And I think some of his comments have been to just intimidate people into not using vote by mail. Keep in mind that despite all these problems, if you request your application to vote by mail now, you'll likely get a ballot here in Central Texas counties 
before the end of September, you can be the first to vote in this critical election. And you've got a whole month to get it back to the post office, in fact, back to the election through the post office, more than a month. Uh, and so there should be nothing that even Donald Trump can do to interfere with your right to vote by mail. But you do have to apply, and our office has information about how to do that. You know, I want to ask you, you say that you guys are trying to do this in a bipartisan way. You do have one Republican author. What has been the response from your Republican colleagues there? Well, uh, so many of them feel, particularly in election year, they have to follow whatever Donald Trump says. That's been one of our problems. We really wouldn't have the kind of abuses that we've had had we been able to get more Republican colleagues to speak up and and say no. I, I was really impressed last night with the first night of the Democratic National Convention at the large number of Republicans that were giving cameo appearances. I served with former Governor John Kasich of uh, Ohio. He was chair of the Budget Committee when I first got to Congress. He's a very conservative Republican, was one of Newt Gingrich's top lieutenants. He was there saying that he had to put country over party. Uh, I think that uh, those people who are no longer holding office as Republicans, governors, prior candidates that were on board last night, one after another, as well as just ordinary Americans out there who are saying, we can't take this anymore. We need to get back to an America where people try to work to solve problems instead of just pitting one group against another, using racism and bigotry to divide us. Uh, we have to put a stop to that. And, and so I think there are Republicans uh, on the postal issue that will ultimately vote with us on Saturday, even if they haven't co-sponsored the bill, because they recognize the, that Republicans, Democrats, people of no political affiliation, we all count on our post office. And particularly at this time of the pandemic, we count on the post office to be there with the mail every day, not to hold up vital communications we need or our medicine or get our bills paid on time. Uh, it's something everybody can be for, and we're trying to present it in a way that President Trump cannot say no. Well, Congressman Dyga, we thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us today. For our viewers, we want to know if you've received your mail late, your medication late, or if you're a business owner and your packages aren't arriving on time due to delays from the Postal Service, let us know. Send us a text message to 512-459-9442. Remember, calling won't work. You'll have to text us.